Welcome back, everybody, into Nations Cup. We are in EU group phase uh, stage two. There we go. Oh, group phase. It's stage two of EU Nations Cup qualifier stuff. I am very tired. We got Germany on the left, Spain on the right, and we're going to Towers of Doom. It'll be fun to watch him play. Yeah, that's, yeah. Justin, Justin, will, it's always fun to watch Justin play. It's also fun to see what Justin is going to draft. Because if I'm not mistaken, uh... The NA qualifier stuff will still use the Meta Madness drafting system. So, in and I believe those are all best of threes. So it'll it'll be it'll be fun because we'll at least get two maps. Second map usually having more fun drafts. Uh, very quick bans coming through from both sides though. My up tracer to be removed. We have got a hogger and some other thing to be banned away. Honestly, not sure what they're going to be prioritizing here on the side of Germany. If it's going to be a Joanna, uh, just to target. Or actually, you know what? Early blaze ban. Oh, Garrosh. Okay. So Germany going to be looking for maybe Diablo here or some sort of dive composition. Maybe a new Barak. Do you consider taking the early Diablo away? No, I think you go for the Blaze here. I think you grab Blaze and you get a very strong solo laner in that. Or you could actually go into Brightwing as well if you wanted to grab an early Brightwing. Uh, get the global value out of her, face shift value for the easy heals. But of course, Lucio exists. So with EU, do we see blaze genji are they gonna go dive dive hey what's up benevento good to see you my friend i hope you're well today thanks for swinging through the stream we are just starting out on our uh, first map of the day in our first best of five there's the genji there's the blaze i have looked into my crystal ball and i've seen it all i know band it's gonna be a long day bud it's gonna be a long day all right, with the loose with the uh, Genji Blaze, they have the Lucio. What do they want to go into to, to counteract this? Do they consider the Anubarak on the side of Spain? Get the Cocoon value, uh, shut down Bunker, being able to dive past that, or do they look into? Okay, just double double soak priority with the Dahaka, strong tank and Murden. Easy, easy pickup. Easy pickups. Uh, still gonna need some poke damage. Junkrat wouldn't be a bad ban unless they plan on going for it themselves on the side of Germany. Since Germany will have the first pick after this ban phase. If they're looking at the Junkrat, they'll probably look for a something else ban. Maybe a Hanzo ban. Ooh, Chromie. Gonna get rid of Chromie. Okay. So maybe the healer they're going into, they're not gonna be having any sort of cleanse. Well, I guess Bunker is a, is a sort of cleanse. X-Strike can be a cleanse. Do you smell Vikings? Oh, I, smell I mean, it is, yeah, it is, you know, it is Germany. They, there, there are some Viking players on that team. All right, and to band away, no yoink ability. Oh boy. Some Vikings wouldn't be awful. I'd be, I'd be happy with that. So if, if Vikings are the case, then probably see Sylvanas for the bottom lane to be able to lock down tower and get early siege. Sylvanas and some sort of tank that can just sit there and, and well, honestly, Sylvanas and Ubarak wouldn't be awful. I will fight to my left. Okay. So Tyrio, Rhaegar, Blaze, Genji, still, they could just push bottom lane with those four heroes easily. I do like the Tyrael getting getting a little, you know, uniqueness in the draft here. I still think you could go into a Hanzo if you wanted, being able to get the poke onto uh, Germany. Also, Junkrat wouldn't be awful. Steel Traps in the bush to catch the Genji. Actually, Junkrat might be the priority. It's also a hero that can uh, set up for the Muradin Stormbolt, but it's a Cassia for the blind and a Stukov as well. Double support from Spain. Hyper carry Cassia. Okay. Oh, I'm trying to wake up. I'm trying to wake up. With Blaze, it'd be weird, right? I mean, no and yes. Like, you could just have this really, really beefy, tanky push. 
Uh, speaking of tanks, there we go. All right, I'm doing a great job casting, trying to wake up. I'm doing my best, sir. <laughs> oh, by the way, I do believe that is a new emote. We have a new, uh, we have a new BTTV emote. BTTV -E -B -B. Um, what is it? It's sorry, sir. There you go. There's your, there's a new BTTV. You don't like the Spain draft? Well, let's go ahead and swap over to the casting screen and start a prediction. Uh, which team wins Towers of Doom? Uh, Germany or Spain? Go ahead and get your gambles in, and you can uh, you can put your channel points where your uh, where your beliefs are. Towers of Doom, map number one. Germany's got a very, very strong draft here. But it is a double support from Spain, so we'll see how this works out. That's, I mean, that's really the, that's the best thing I can say at this point, is we'll see how it works out. Because honestly, I am not sure how it's going to work out from Spain. Double support will allow them to really step into the hammer and sustain damage. I just, well, I don't know if it's going to be enough. I do like the Cassia, though. Might see Valkyrie to try and pull the hammer, though hammer does have self-cleanse at level 4 if she does take it. On the left-hand side, we got the members of Germany. We have got Dino on the... <laughs> Dino on the Genji, uh, Nisha on the Tyrael, Hazuobs to be playing the Blaze. We'll see Death Knight on the Rhaegar, and Sergeant Hammer to be played by Ultralisk. <laughs> To the right-hand side of the map, we're looking at Spain. We got Pep on the Dahaka, Joanna, yeah, yeah, yeah. On the Smurden, we got Drac on the Lucio, Exilium on the, uh, onto the Sukov, and Nano playing the Cassia. No believers in Spain. What's up, Lava? Good to see you, bud. A little butt spot. You put 2.5 Bitcoins on Germany. Nice. I hope it pays well. You're unconvinced of solo ca solo DPS Cassia. Well, it doesn't look like anyone's uh, convinced by it because no one believed in Spain. We'll see what happens here. Germany may lose their first game. No, I'm just kidding. Um, Last weekend, by the way, was all... Yeah, last Sunday was all 3-0s. So we'll see if today is different. We do have, I, I would say probably the, the highlight of the day is going to be France versus Sweden. That's going to be a really fun matchup. I'm excited to, I'm excited to, to see Lobber uh, beat up, beat up the, the French players. No, well, it, it should be, it, that one should be a pretty good matchup for the day. We should see that be a few games. I don't, I don't think France 3-0 Sweden. At least I hope not. Showing my uh, my country bias a little bit here, and then we'll also uh, I believe after this game it is or after this best of five it is Ukraine versus Poland if I'm not mistaken as Exulium will be dove here drops the lurking arm a lot of damage still going down on this Dukov Genji comes through with with the, with the uh, comes through with the swift strike and that is going to be but a trade into the Rhaegar Germany will lose their healer Dino getting a little bit low here able to swift strike away. A trade in kills, not too bad. First objective phase will be top left and right as always. Bottom of the map, though, will be where our RNG altar is going to be. Uh, my apologies to Haka gets caught in the mid lane. He will go down. Cheering for Sweden because of Gia and Lobber. Some really good players on Sweden, too. Lurking arm combo going out onto Dino. No Stormbolt to connect from Muradin. Well, it's looking like the the hearth is going to be interrupted, or at least stalled out for now. Blaze gets a camp in the top lane. Hazuab is just going to get some extra pressure up here as the Dahaka was killed, but it seems like Dahaka will sniff this out. Going to step in and try and brawl against Hazuab. we got a 1v1 in top lane, but Genji, look at your minimap. Look at your minimap. Genji's on the way up. He's seen in the mini wave. Mini map. He's seen in the minion wave on the mini map. And Dino will be able to turn the tables here, allowing Hazuobs to get the camp. 
for some extra pressure into the top lane. Two to one in the kills, favoring the side of Germany as we get into our first objective phase. Lucio up here as well, but one, two, three sappers do make it into the gate. Oh, actually into the tower as well. Lucio harassing on the right-hand side. Genji actually getting a little bit low here. Genji getting a Dino getting a little bit low here, playing with some fire. This is a little this is a little scary. There's the deflect Murden comes in with the storm bolt, but no connection from that stun. Seems like we have a trade. Ooh, actually bottom lane was captured by the side of Spain. I thought there would have been a delay with the Sergeant Hammer. Not the case, and it's going to be Spain ahead right now on Towers of Doom through the first objective, but it is early in the game. Sergeant Hammer does have that self-cleanse, and Sergeant Hammer Ultralisk is about to get the most important talent for this hammer, and that is going to be the Hover Siege. And that is what is going to change things up for Germany quite a bit. A lot more, not a lot, but still, maneuverability for the hammer, so that turret can kind of poke easier around the objective phases. Speaking of, we'll have our next one shown on the minimap. It's going to be bottom and center of the map. See how these are going to be played out. Will they be traded or will it be a dominant fight by one side, resulting in eight shots? The wave pressure is all is already telling, and it's only gonna get worse. I I was trying to think of a joke, but I have nothing. I'm sorry. The Haka brush stalks in, there's the cleanse from Hammer, the drag does not connect, Elongated Tongue would have definitely got that, but the fight does continue, Talent tier equal right now, a little bit of an experience advantage, but a drag will land on the Tyrael, Tyrael does go down, he's got 21 seconds on that death timer, will he get a cheat on that at all? Yes, he does get a little bit off his death timer, Murden traded in the moment, but a drag will connect onto Rhaegar on that. Oh, he bites onto the minion, he's able to back away, Genji dives in, Nano is still alive. Dino, I think Dino might be out of here. Feeding Frenzy for Tahaka will be not giving enough cooldown. Sergeant Hammer, though, poking in. The double support enough. Meanwhile, Hazu up in top lane does push up the wave into this fort, and that's going to be down to a third of its HP. Or, excuse me, losing a third of its HP. Swift Strike does take down the Cassia. Reset for Dino, and that's Dino popping off with the help of Sergeant Hammer, able to get the double kill. And that should be eight shots into the core of Spain. As I mentioned, a dominant fight resulting in eight shots into one core. Really, really well played from Germany as this game does progress. We take a look at the talents. Excuse me, take a look at the other numbers. You can see the 10 talents at the top of the screen. Judgment material, by the way, everything else is pretty much standard. I guess BFG for the hammers. Usually on a map like this, you have Napalm Strike for the poke ability, especially at level 20 for the uh, delay around the objective phasing. But there's a judgment from the Tyrael. The BFG is going to be some extra damage, and that was the point I was about to get to, but they showcased it before I could say anything. The explosion from Tyrael gets a little bit off his death timer, but will not take down the Cassia. Speaking of things going down, the bottom lane fort is going to fall. Hazuobs doesn't have a bunker available for 50-some seconds. And he will fall, but still, they get the bottom lane bell tower. They find a couple kills. Germany still in the lead here on map number one in our first best of five of the day. Next altar, bottom of the map. So this is the best case scenario for Germany as they have control over the bottom of the map. The enemy has to rotate either through, as you're going to see right here, the sapper area or directly through the center of the map from mid lane. A little bit of poke onto the Dahaka as the bottom lane dive into Sergeant Hammer will be attempted, but it doesn't work out. A lot of low health bars. Ball Lightning from Cassia does go out, but she will fall trying to step in for that damage. Murden has to Dwarf Toss out, and that will be the end of the engagement. And I do believe this objective phase going over to the side of Germany. Rhaegar gets a Sapper Camp for bottom lane on their allied side of the map. And I wouldn't be surprised if Rhaegar actually drops a Chain Heal and goes and s starts channeling the altar, or at least running towards the altar. Hammer defends, Rhaegar channels, Murden being zoned away by the Tyrael and Genji. And that's an easy five shots. Genji, Tyrael dive in with the X-Strike. The BFG wasn't even close, but it doesn't even matter. Dear Lord, they beaten up on that, that Lucio. Such a mobile hero, absolutely immobilized in the moment. Bottom lane does have three sappers, which will be cleared out before they jump into the death zone. But in top lane, 
Speaking of jumps, we got Genji jumping in on two. This to Haka. He pops his essence. He taps the bush. He's got five stacks, so that means he moves at 130% uh, for five seconds. When he does tap the bush ball lightning, Azuabs gets the bunker. Breaks away the ball lightning from Cassia, but a massive shove into the death zone will confirm the kill. A lot of tools utilized, though, to get that kill onto Hazuobs, though. It is going to be for a chunk of experience, which is going to pull them back into the game a little bit here. So finding these little bit of kill, these little kills, or just these singular kills, are still important for the side of Spain. Pull them back experience-wise into this game. Next objective phase will be single altar in the center of the map. We'll get the announcement for that one fairly soon. Blaze up in five seconds. A sliver of experience to go for Spain. Actually, they roll into their 13s with the help of Zahaka in top lane. He will brush stock into this bottom area. Dino poking on the right side. Material jumps in, but he's not going to be able to holy ground the camp because he didn't go for holy ground. He went sword of justice. Sappers for the bottom. Drag from Dahaka does not connect. One, two, three. Sappers make it into the bell tower to try and convert this over a little bit faster. Murder with a storm bolt. Does he have a haymaker? That's a judgment from the Tyrael. Actually, Lucio's Bop kind of mispositioning Dino. Murder was positioned for the haymaker to be right into the allied side, but Drax little uh, sound wave pushing Lucio into a, uh, or excuse me, pushing Genji into. A safer spot. Stormbolt on the far side will be able to poke onto Hazuobs. We got Cassia broken away from the team. Zoned by the Tyrael here is even talent tiers. We got experience advantage inside of Germany, and it seems like, I don't, th yeah, it seems like Hazuobs gets the channel. That's five more shots in Spain's core. Hey, good morning, Gato. Happy Saturday to you. Lurking on from the Stukov, just to try and zone back the enemy. Cassia poking with some lightning furies onto the fort in the bottom lane. Still not reconverted, and Germany holding on to a commanding lead. No, oh, I forgot I had an Amazon list for Bandit. I should probably adjust that. I don't know. I don't, honestly, I don't even know what's on it. I need to look at that. We'll do that. We'll do that between games today. That's what we'll do. We'll, we'll take a look at that list and do stuff between games. Tyrael's going to be caught into the bush right here, but is he really caught? He's going to judgment out on top of the Stukov, who does fall. Bunker comes out from Blaze, providing some some sustainability and some also some sustained damage. Hazuob's Dido jump onto this uh, <laughs> onto the Lucio at the fort front gate, and he will fall. This Muradin, I think, is going to be dead. I don't see a world where you live here, Muradin. He's going to try and storm bolt. He's going to do his best. He dwarf tosses away. But Genji's got the chase. By the way, Tyrael in bottom lane is trying to push up the sappers. Triple altars. Um, timer for the objective phase. Still 14 seconds. Muradin only the only one down so I do think they should be able to delay this out oh that's one sapper so I'm looking at mini map and I'm and I'm just like wait a minute blaze Genji that might be GG if they get all three right caster math six plus six is twelve <laughs> if they get all three it's GG's I mean if they get if they get two plus boss it's GG's I believe right no Yes? No. No. I can't math today. I'm sorry. It'd be one more. They need they need this altar. Judgment from the Tyrael comes in. Massive shove from Stukov. BFG does get some damage into the Cassia, who runs right into Dino with a Fend. And the Lucio trying to keep some allies alive with a push off. The healing pathogen spread around. We've got Bunker from Blaze on the top of our screen to zone back the Dahaka. Azuab's going for the channel here. That is a Cassia falling. Germany might have speed run this map. They don't get a perfect play, but Dino on this Genji, you just can't let it happen. And Dino, you're just absolutely disgusting on this Genji. Does he get the kill? Nah, he doesn't get the kill. Either way, GG, well played. Germany takes map number one. You need a commentator to do math, Baja. <laughs> Sleepy Tahoe Man does math more at 11. <laughs>
Uh, I'm so tired. Good morning, Crush. Hello, everybody. Thank you for the lurk, Gato. Welcome back, everyone, into Nations Cup map number two. In our first best of five of the day, we are going to be heading into Garden of Terror. As a reminder, things like Genji, Rhaegar, Lucio, Stukov, Muradin, uh, Blaze, they are unavailable for this next map as they were already played in the previous map. So now we are down 10 heroes. We're going to get a few bands and we're going to see what. Spain and Germany will be drafting for map number two. You're gonna get your hair cut, every single one of them. Well, F's in chat for your hair. <laughs> Good thing we can't hear them screaming. Oh, that would just be awful. Uh, I don't know where my brain is this morning. Uh, Hogger and Anubarak will be banned away. We've got a Maev and a Tracer to be banned off as well. First pick going over the side of Spain is going to be a Brightwing. All right, Spain going to prioritize the global hero, healer. healer. Well, that's a that's a that's a very fast one-two punch. That's a very fast one too. I guess more more so one two three because you have a Smuro Abathur. That's uh that's that's annoying to deal with. What are you gonna what are you gonna grab to deal with this on the side of Spain? They're gonna grab a Sylvanas. They're gonna push hard. They're gonna open up the map early on and try and be able to dive the Abathur. I think that's at least what I I'm guessing. Uh, getting into the next ban phase, probably tank ban priorities here. I would assume it's going to be tank, but yeah, there it is. No, uh, no hard initiation from Diablo to be able to, to, to dive on in and slam against the walls. There are a lot of really good wall connections for Diablo on, on a map like this. Oh god, you're up against Abathur and Samura already? What else do you not want to deal with? I, 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 I can't, I can't, I'm trying so hard. Yeah, there you go, Kerosene. I was like, I was like, what's good pairs with Abathur? And even that phrasing in my own head, I was like, oh, that does not, that doesn't sound right at all. Silence Arrow and Polymorphs are good uh, Samuro lockdowns, just like Leap from Sonya too. Germany is going for the kill at this point. Oh, well, they got to do at least three maps. Ah, that's scary. Are they going to last pick Alex Straza? I doubt it, but it's an option. Grab the globes for Alex Straza. Give them to Joanna if you go Laws of Hope at level one. I mean, double shield glare is pretty much what they're going to always go, but it's always, it's always a fun conversation to think about. Oh, God. What else do you want to go? Uh, what else do you want to grab? I just, I just don't know what you, you would do at this point. It just feels like the enemy, or the, the members of Germany are just getting everything they want and more with this draft. The answer is going to be Kira and Malganis. Spain coming out with some interesting picks in the end. We'll see how this works out. Dark conversion, maybe? Dark conversion Malganis? Could be a possibility. Mephisto jumps in. Dark conversion. Kill him. Maybe. Leads. Uh, there's also a lot of damage over time stacking with Sylvanas Kira. Sonya could go into uh, poison or could go into poison spear. On it to round things out. Alrighty. Well then. Which team wins? Garden of Terror. Can Spain make something happen, or is this just going to be a 2-0 lead for Germany?
Hell yeah, let's go. 10 on Germany, 20 on Germany. I got 10 on Germany, 20 on Germany. Do I got 30, 30, 30, do we got 30 on Germany? Okay, I'm done. Into Garden Terror we go. Is this the best of five? Indeed it is. The All the EU games for the second stage are best of fives. We are guaranteed at least three maps as we have on the left-hand side the members of Germany niche. On the Joanna Hazuab's playing the Abathur, we've got Dino playing this Mephisto, Death Knight on the Ana, and we've got Samuro to be played by Ultralisk. To the east of the map, we are looking at Spain. We got Pep on the Sonia. We've got uh, Joanna. There you go, just just for the weebs in chat. On the Malganis, we got Nano on the Kira, Drac playing the Sylvanas, and Exilium on that Brightwing. 2k on the underdogs, take your bucks. I mean, realistically, if you've got thousands of channel points, you might as well play some, you know, play some underdog bets. Why not? Worst case scenario, you lose a little bit of channel points. And someone else gets them, and then they're happy. And then they're like, you know what? I think I'll sub to this channel at tier 3 to see the best tier 3 alert on all of Twitch. <laughs> Bottom lane rotation, so I was just peeking at the Samuro in top lane to see if there's any sort of denial onto him from Sonya and Malganis, but not so much the case. Uh, yielding power for Mephisto, he's got two stacks on the Skull Missile Quest level 1. So, ugh. Abbott are going to be going into the uh, Pressurized Glands at level 1. It gives you the extra range, which is going to be synergistic with some later talents as well. We'll see if we get to that point, because to be honest, chat's fairly convinced that Germany's got this in the bag, and I'm not one to call games. I do believe, though, Germany's got a very, very good draft here. Now, can they execute? That is where things will come into play. That is, of course, where... And honestly, Kira's kind of an X Factor a little bit. I feel like Kira's, when they land their abilities, they can be really, really strong, but it's that landing of the abilities is the is the hard part. So it's gonna come down to the execution as well from Nano. So execution, always the X Factor. It just, whenever I feel like I talk about execution, it feels like a cop out of analysis. But either way. Top lane's got a decent wave pushed in. Savannah's has got those black arrows, I'm assuming. Oh, God, sorry. I don't think anyone was too upset about that, but sorry about that. I, I fat-fingered the uh, the player button. You know, I really should move those. That is the first time I've hit the bandit cam. It's been next to the player icon button for the longest time. It's the first time I've fat-fingered that, honestly. <laughs> I can't believe it. Anyways, audio looks good. Sound looks good. We're good. The first seed is sprouted. Gather it, would you? <laughs> just, just a little bandit break in the middle of the game. Dino lows got a lot of healing over time applied. Nano comes in, and there's first blood. But did the Kira go a little too deep? Nah. First blood goes over to Spain. That X factor in the Kira coming through. Weebs are illegal. We need a we need we need a weeb alert that's very very low percent to trigger. That's what we need. By the way, I figured out what was breaking the um, the gifted sub alerts. It's I cannot have two different gifted sub alerts, so I have to manually swap them out here and there, which that's no big deal. And then and then all the other ones that are like the tier ones and the, the primes and all that, like those ones work perfectly fine now, so. Weird, weird interactions, weird, weird coding. Well, still pressure in top lane of first objective phase being ignored, phase shift from right wing with the peekaboo as well. The golden rule for a while. It was a golden rule for a while when two teams uh, had decent-ish drafts. The winner is usually the team that the easiest comp to execute. Yep. Yep. I think I think that still holds true for sure as well. 
But of course, like, and this is this was a conversation I think like Justin and I had on CCL or maybe even like off stream, was just like even though it's a composition may be easier to execute, you can still flub that execution. So yeah, there's always there's always the X factor of of pushing the buttons right, which is just it's you know tournament pressure can get to people. Uh, you know, game day length can get to people for sure. You, you play... I, obviously, it's not going to be the case here. Everyone's just playing one best of five. But you get into, like, a tournament setting when you're 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 playing Here's a Storm for four, five, six hours straight. Yeah, that, that six, sixth hour, that those games really start to get taxing. But either way, we will get into the ten talent tiers. So, of course, we do what we always do. We cycle through the other numbers. Get an idea of what those look like while the tens come through. Gotta be honest, surprised to see Spain this far ahead in experience. Polymorph onto uh, Samuro, who's trying to chunk down the Kira, and Face Shift will be forced out. Peekaboo does get the vision onto Samuro, but he's able to speedily walk away. Uh, also, I did not forget we do have a uh, bandit redemption after this game, so I will get to that after this map. We've got Blink, we've got Wailing. I'm assuming Sonya's Leap. She could go Wrath if she wants to just have that extra damage for Siege and. Oh, no, she's going Leap. Kira with the final strike. Oh. Unrelenting strikes is more fun, in my opinion, but final strike, I mean, it's, it's got some cool values with it. Increased damage to low health pool heroes. Uh, it's gonna be carry and swarm for the Melganus. No dark conversion. Alrighty. Hey, Darth, what's up, bud? Early stream today? Well, yeah, it's the EU tournament. It's the EU qualifier. Uh, by the way, Mephisto's level ten. I always talk about this when you go when you go consume soul. I feel like there's a conversation around the level thirteen hysteria. Getting regeneration globes to cool down the, what is it, two minute? Yeah, it's a two minute cooldown on Consumed Soul. Doesn't have the craziest value, but it does have a slow, which is something Samuro likes to play off of. Nice final strike, they find Hazuob's, but they can't kill him. Final strike did half of Hazuob's health pool. I just, I find that comical, by the way. Actually, it did more than half of his health pool. 608 damage. Oh, revolving sweep onto somebody. Polymorph. Mephisto goes down. A double kill to the side of Spain. All right. Way to go, Spain. Maybe put one up on the board today. Hazuobs, by the way, did not go into Mule. Hazuobs did not take the Terran ability. He is playing toward... He's a... What's the word I'm looking for? He's, he's... Oh, nice sidestep from Death Knight. He's cosplaying, he's cosplaying the Zerg very well. He's staying thematic to the Zerg, I think is probably the right word for it. He's like, oh, I don't want to use those Terran abilities. Let me make sure I stick, stick to just what my hat does. But that is, that is a, that is a concerning thing at this point for the side of Germany. They're starting to lose some health on a lot of these structures that Mule could easily be healing up at this time. Did go into the network carapace. This is something to be able to push the waves a little bit harder as well. Applying that untalented shield to nearby allies, heroes, minions, and mercenaries. Excuse me, allied heroes. It's still a first objective, by the way. Mm -hmm. Indeed it is. Indeed it was. Second objective just now spawning right now. 13 talent here ahead for Spain. Feel like Germany will give this and push. Shouldn't you be gathering that right wing in the bottom. She's gotta have phase shift up and available. Kira's not even gonna work on the. Did Samuro do the hearth trick? I I don't know if he did hearth trick right there. I thought I thought I saw him do it. Top lane once again getting a nice wave shoved into the fort here. Kira, Malganus, Savanus all around the objective. Malganus gonna go anchor in the bush on the left hand side of the objective. Gonna night rush out. It's gonna be a delay. Malganus knocked over the, the gnome. This is unfortunate. Anna has, uh... <laughs> she's got Eye of Horus to delay up the objective, but she's kind of just stuck doing it. 
So they're, I love this. They're like, oh, I have horse would sit there and delay us. Let's just go siege because Anna's stuck in turret mode in top lane. All right, so this will be consumed soul uh, utilized to delay out the objective. A two minute cooldown to delay out the objective. Not sure how I feel about that, but okay. Siege Giants in the top lane. This is still second objective phase. We have one mine. Danger ping on the mine, but I do think, yeah. Uh, I don't think there's another delay. That's second seed over the set of Spain. Can't believe it. Can't believe it. They're playing this so very well. Leap on top of the Samuro. He's taking a tower shot or two. Face shift from Brightwing comes into the bottom lane. Malganis down here as well. Big soothing mist to try and keep that uh, Sonya nice and healthy. She'll start spinning into the enemy a little bit here. Malganis with a carry and swarm as well. Spain more so defensive. That's a revolving sweep. A dive onto the, onto the Joanna. She gets a shield glare out. Sonya spears in. A lot of grapple hook abilities, I just realized. <laughs> A lot of grapple hooks on the side of uh, Spain with the spear and the, well, quite literally the grapple hook. Damage decreased by 25% against you. Okay. So, couldn't remember how much it increased by. I was like, I know it increased the damage below 50%, but I don't know how, how much. Started to get, uh, starting to get scared. I might have been hustled out of your bandit bucks. Hustled? What do you mean hustled? There was no hustling in this channel. Sixteen talent tier for the side of Spain as they have a seed up and available for contest. Malganis is blind as a bat trying to find a target. That will expire. Alright, Garden Terror is over the side of Spain. Oh, Malganis is setting up deep. Deep flank from Malganis. Deep, 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 deep. Savannah's over the far side of the wall. Malganis with the Night Rush. That is going to be denied by the Iron Skin of Joanna. She drops the plus shield. Face shift from Brightwing. And now Joanna's on the retreat. Savannah's jumps forward. The Consumed Soul is not utilized quick enough. I think that Consumed Soul was to delay out the objective. Don't think the button was pressed quick enough, and that is going to be our first objective over to the side of Spain. Though, I do want to point out, Ultralisk was able to push down the fort in the top lane, but right now, bottom lane is the most important thing. Leaping from Sonya, she's going deep for Death Knight. The top lane, or the bottom lane keep is shut down. Final Strike doesn't get the distance onto the Ana, and the Overgrowth Plant will expire, but Sylvanas has got the Black Arrows to keep this bottom lane siege going. Shield glare from the Joanna as Malganis blind as a bat is going to be razor swiping around as much as he possibly can. Face shift from Brightwing coming in as well. The Garden Terror in bottom lane very healthy. Mid lane Garden Terror does go down. Joanna will fall as well. The Overgrowth plant on the far side of the keep. This keep is falling. Look at where the Sonya and the rest of the team is playing from. Are they looking to end the game? A very low Malganis has to dash away. And Samuro wants to try and get the kill, but the Spear, the Wailing Arrow, is he able to get away? Carrion Swarm is not going to be able to find the kill, but the Sleep Dart does connect onto Malganis. He's out of range of this keep, and Mephisto's not able to get a kill. The Garden Terror gets some score scratching, but that is going to be it. Another Black Arrow to lock down the fort in the mid lane, and I got to say, Spain with a fantastic objective phase, getting a keep in bottom. Sonya still chasing out into Samuro here does have the bright wing around for some extra assistance but really well played from spain only one structure down on their side of the map the top lane fort bottom lane fort only just just the structure i mean we do have the oh and mid lane same thing no gate available in mid key uh, steal under the camp here in the bottom mephisto samara will scout this out but i think that was a clone yes that was a clone he does have the way of illusion at level 10 so he's able to micro those clones around Right? I'm not crazy? Yeah. Lose your master, excuse me. Thank you for the lurk, Mel. Appreciate it. Alright, that's a Siege Giant camp. Mephisto will use Consumed Soul. We got Samuro clones on the back line. Sylvanas falls. Kira will go down. Has Spain... Has reverse Uno been called? Uh, face shift in time, 30 HP on the Malganis. 
Samuro with the Sakuchi able to dash forward. Polymorph drop. Oh my god, Samuro's gonna get the kill. What happened, Spain? What happened? Night rush onto the Mephisto. Oh wow, is Germany looking to end? No, Malganus goes down here. Carry and swarm. He'll heal off these clones. The level 20 Abathur Spike. Oh yes, the level 20 talent tier that, that Hazuobs has at level 18. Ah, yes, because Abathur is just like Chromie. No, it's actually level, it's the, it's the combo of the Soma Transference. You, well, you're getting heals from this, but it's actually the Envenom Spines. Envenom Spines, and I believe it's the level 16 Merciless Strikes. Level 16's huge for Samuro Abathur because you have Envenom Spines, which will uh, slow movement speed by 40% for two seconds, and then Merciless Strikes, basic attacks against here uh, against stunned, rooted, or slowed enemies are always critical strikes. Keep in mind, I mentioned earlier, pressurized glands. There's some synergies with the later talents, and that is also going to be that in Venom Spines. The other reason I bring up so much transference, it's a little bit of extra healing, a little bit of more, a uh, little more sustainability for that Samuro to be able to just continually sustain that pressure. But of course, we're 20 apiece in our levels. We have got the uh, three blade style for Samara. Oh wait, hold on, fight breaks out. Ana goes down the left hand side. That's a storm shield from the, from the Joanna, a very low, Nano is trying to heal up and actually heals up with the, with the carnage. The blood rage. That's what I was talking about, Kira. You, you land your abilities, you can survive. You miss, you're dead. That's, that's just how Kira feels. And Spain might be taking this? That is a dead Joanna. Maybe. Samuro's here. This is actually a little scary because Samuro's here. <laughs> Samuro with Abathur Hat. We've talked about it. We've talked about why the value is good. Um, wait, can Spain not end? Can Spain not end against this? Kira gets the grappling hook, but has turned into a seed on the way over. Altral is trying to jump onto the Sonya and she pops her. Ignore pain. <laughs> this is not. No. Oh, no. <laughs> <Hero suit>. <laughs> Me. <laughs> oh god. <laughs> well then. <laughs> Alright. That happened. I don't know how it happened, but it did happen. Um. <laughs> Just... Uh, what? Okay. The top lane's got a massive wave on the keep right now, but Germany's looking to uh, open things up. Of course, the, the kills that were on the core were not game ending. So I think, honest to God, even Spain, this might have been the game plan from Spain. They might have said, look, we have so much outer layer defenses, we could throw ourselves at the core, get a good chunk off of it, and then the enemy still doesn't win the game. That, honest to God, might have been the conversation Spain was having. Because look at look at the map right now. What did what did Germany get? Germany got a fort. They'll get they should get the bottom lane fort here, but Germany got a fort in mid lane and the keep front gate. If 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 Spain can kill Ger if, if Spain can kill Germany, if Spain can kill Samuro, this might be GG for Spain. Oh, wrap around from Alganis. Are they looking for the deep flank again? If Spain can just kill Samuro, if they can just kill the right Samuro, they can probably end because Samuro is the massive denier on core, as you saw before. Brightwing is pushing up a wave in mids. Uh, yeah, she's pu she's pushing up that wave a little bit onto the keep right now, trying to apply some pressure. There's going to be 
the heroic from Mephisto. That's a very low Sylvanas. We have a Malganus's Giga split from the team trying to pressure the on on the left hand side with the blind as a bat fell claws. We have got the channel onto the seat from the Brightwing as well. Nano gets just annihilated. Not sure about that channel onto the seat. It wasn't really necessary. It's not like the enemy was about to get the Garden Terror with that. Feel like Spain are kind of falling apart in this late game on Garden of Terror. They had a really good lead, and now that lead has floundered. Sonya clears out the top lane. Joanna pops her level 20. I keep wanting to say Storm, uh, Storm Shield, but that's not right. It's blinded by the light. Felclaws with the blind as a bat to zone back the enemy. Hazuabs did clone the Samuro for some extra siege value. Keep in mid lane still survives. Cure up in 10. We've got pressure onto the real Samuro, but I, I don't, I'm, I, yeah, it's not. I don't know about this fight, Spain. Not 100% sure about that fight. Sonya pops abilities, taps. Well, she's got leap and she will be forced to use it. Well, well, well. I got nothing against Germany. I was just hoping for more games today. And right now, Germany's looking to make their series a 3-0. Well, at least get on the momentum for a 3-0. Let's not call it just yet. Germany could forget. Germany's keyboards could all unplug all at the same time. <laughs> Ultralist keyboard could just maybe, you know, maybe the batteries die on Ultralist keyboard. Because <laughs> we all know gamers love their wireless keyboards. Uh, that's not going to be, they're not going to, they're not going to, they're not going to. Okay. I was like, he's not going to swap to that clone and start trying to go for core on his own here. That would have been suicide. Are they trying to backdoor? They're going to be scouted by Abathur. They're going to be scouted, period. They're going to try and backdoor core. Sylvanas is, Sylvanas is alive. They're trying to delay the backs. Did Samuro get back to core? Samuro's being delayed out. They're on core. Nano's so very low. The core shielding is starting to go down. Pep is going to be sleeping away. Pops the barrier. This is a lot of low health bars, but it's not going to work out. They needed the Sylvanas. They needed more, and they don't get the core. Spain are still... F yeah, they still got Joanna delaying things out over here. 23% left on the core. Oh, Spain. They tried to go for it, but it just... Just the backs did not... The, the back canceling did not work out. Joanna's got... Oh, she's got the Abathur hat, so she's got that. Let's go ahead and get our button here. Team kill! Spain tried so hard. Oh man. Red team's core is under Oh, how unfortunate. Spain with just a good attempt. Uh, just a really, really, really good attempt. Spain looking looking at the Colossus that is Germany and saying, you know what? We think we can take you down. And they almost did. They almost took a map off of Germany. Well, that's not going to be the case right now as Germany goes up in this best of five series, two to zero. I paid that bet a little early, my bad. To figure, to if if Finland drops out, instead of bringing another European team, they just bring the second place team in from from NA. That's what they should do. Welcome back, everyone, to Nations Cup, uh, second phase for EU. We've got Germany on the left, we've got Spain on the right. We're going to Infernal Shrines for our next map, as we will be seeing first pick priority for the side of Spain. This will be the map choice of Germany. We're going to see some similar bands, I do believe. 
Yep. Nothing really out of the ordinary right now. Tracer ban. There are 10 heroes, by the way, that are banned away since we have had 10 heroes played so far. So things like, I got a little sheet over here. Things like Genji, Abathur, Joanna, Mephisto, Ana, Brightwing, Sonya, Cassia, Stukov, all those great heroes are all unplayable on this map as we get a pretty, I think these are the exact same bands for all three games so far. All right, Spain, what are you gonna open up with? Uh, it's gonna be a Junkrat, okay. Open up with Junkrat on this map, not too bad whatsoever. They could be going into a Stitches composition. They could go into a Kidnap composition. Go for the Gorge with the Steel Trap as well. On the side of Germany, I mean, Junkrat can go in so many different directions. Just I'm, I'm curious if they're gonna maybe look for, for like a niche strategy on the side of uh, Spain. Okay, Germany starting out with uh, two strong heroes for a map like this. The Orc Great on the Shrines, good on Wave Clear, Double Soak, Team Fighting, setting things up with the Entomb. And you've got Kerrigan with just Ravage, Control, uh, Impales, and Primal Grasps. I kept wanting to say Umbral Bind, and I was like, that's my app, man. Urel to push people away and doing for the yoink, okay? That still it still could be a stitches. It still could be stitches. I wouldn't be surprised if they actually go for a stitches ban right here, right now on the side of Germany. I would actually like to see Germany go for a stitches ban, unless they're just not even afraid of it. Unless Germany's like, no, we're not afraid. We'll just like pick Medivh or something in the last spot. By the way, Diablo Medivh is available if they want to go for that on the side of either team, realistically. Nailed it. So now what? Now what are you gonna do? Oh! Chogall. Chogall. Just Chogall it, dude. Easy peasy Chogall it. They're not gonna do it. They're not gonna do it. There's already a Leoric on the opposing side. There's already Leoric with percent base damage. They're not going to do it. They're going to go, like, Diablo. Well, let's see. Uh, Arthas, Diablo, ETC, Garrosh, Varian are all available for, for, for tanks, as they are listed on this list, at least. I don't know. Okay, Chromie, Stukov. Okay. Chromie, Stukov. I don't hate it whatsoever. I honestly thought it was going to be Uther. That's why I was... Oh, it's probably going to be Stukov Uther. It's probably going to be main tank Uther. Because then they can go for the... Uh, the Just the, the lockdown. It's insane. If Germany goes for Uther, I think they just... They win through draft. I don't, I don't know. I don't... I, I don't know. I expect single target deletions. There's the Gary. Antikas. I don't hate their draft. I don't hate Spain's draft. I just feel like if... They get the Uther right here. This is going to be our... Honestly, Varian would be fine, too. Varian, Uther, some sort of point-and-click stun for the Kerrigan to play off of, and the Chromie as well. Okay, all right. I don't know this game. What? What just happened? Stukov was already played. Oh, right. Yeah, Stukov was already played. It's Malfurion. Okay, so Stukov is Malfurion. Got it. Well, then. All right. Um, Do we have to do the entire draft again for purposes? I am not sure. All right. Well, nope. We're not going to do the whole draft again. Okay, cool. I have hit the ready button. By the way, I don't know how far along we are in Jedi Survivor, but we'll uh, we'll finish up Jedi Survivor fairly soon, and we will be then doing a Elden Ring randomizer. I am so excited about the Elden Ring randomizer. I cannot wait for it. Spain has a better draft in your opinion? Well, then put your bandit bucks where, where your beliefs are. Put your bandit bucks where your beliefs are, because we have got ourselves a load-in for map number three. 
I am just waiting for the stream to catch up a little bit before I do start the uh, the prediction. Junkrat was a good pick. Junkrat was a very good pick. I do like the Garrosh as well. Junkrat with the uh, counter dive value. Garrosh just strong as well with the displacement. We could see Decimate. We could see a Decimate Garrosh, but there's a prediction opened up, ready to go. Who's going to win in front of Shrines? People are going to be flying all over the place. Indeed, they are. On the left-hand side, we've got the members of Germany. We've got Hazuab's on the Leork, Nish on the Deathwing. We've got Ultralis playing that Kerrigan, Dino on the Chromie, and Death Knight to play the Malfurion. To the right-hand side of our map, we've got Spain looking to put one up on the board here, continue this best of five series. we got Nano on the Junkrat, Pep on the Urel, Joanna. Playing this Garage, Drac on the Tychus, and we've got Exilium playing the Anduin. There's your mid lane. Look at it in its glory. Nobody nobody left clicking on the Treasure Goblin sword. Once again, the first time. Kerrigan with the Fury of the Swarm. Dauntless Urel. Quarterback Tychus. We've got Unrivaled Strength for Garage. Been seeing a lot more Unrivaled Strength lately for Garage players. Usually it's Groundbreaker at one, or we get the body check from time to time, but not so much Unrivaled Strength. We saw a lot of Unrivaled Strength when Garrosh was first put into the game. And then that was pretty, like, that didn't last very long. I don't know. Might be a European just priority or just what the player likes to have. We will see the Frozen Punisher as our first Punisher of the game in the bottom lane. Unrivaled Strength, by the way, gives the range. Yeah, just range and damage. Tychus dashes in. Really good shred into this Deathwing. He'll lose a couple armor plates. Leap of Fate does get the Garrosh into a better position. He doubles back into the enemy team. Once again, into the fray for the Garrosh. The gambles are a lot less this game. Because I feel like people got nervous after that last map. I feel like people, like... Germany believers got a lot a lot more nervous after that last map. They're like, you know what? Maybe I won't put 13,000 on, on, on my on my on my team. Maybe, maybe I'll just maybe I'll just just a little bit of points. <laughs> oh, sorry, I just the Deathwing landing in the middle of the lane, I had the random thought of the ARAM we played a while ago where there was a player who was like well, this Deathwing can just land on people. They're broken. They, they found a bug in the game, and it's like, read the level 7 talent. And they were like, no, it's a bug. De I've played this game for so long. First blood goes over the side of Germany. There was someone, because it was the it was the cooldown reduction talent at level 7 for Deathwing on his land. And so the Deathwing and Aram literally just kept landing on top of the team, taking off, landing on top of the team, taking off. And it was it was a it was a Nazebo, excuse me, on our team that was like, was like. This, it, I, I played this game for so long. This is not possible. They found a bug, and I just kept going, read the seven talent. They were like, no, I played this game. <laughs> oh, okay. You, uh, this person's played this game for a very long time and apparently doesn't know how to read talents. <laughs> All right, try popping up here. We've got a uh, camp on the top left to be grabbed by the side of Germany. Garrosh and Urel looking to jump in. Garrosh, uh, Urel will be time-stopped. <laughs> like, they, un they, like, they understood everything, but, like, that, that one thing threw them so, so off. Like, just that level, that level seven. Well, Spain gets a camp a little bit later than Germany does. Feels like Spain's giving over this first objective. Urel still in top lane, clearing out the camp. She'll go ahead and righteous hammer that around into the range of the fort. Tychus gonna try and shred down the Leoric health pool, but doesn't seem like he's too worried about it. Junkrat gets a concussion mind to split away. 23 and rising skeleton defenders to the side of Germany. And as I mentioned, it does feel like Spain will be giving this as Urel continues to stay in top lane. She'll be sieging in with her available camp. Leoric is gonna go catch that soak as well, or uh, counter siege. 
Burel also trying to soak up that experience to try and get to level 7 as quick as possible for the team in this defense right now and will be able to have that. Really? No melting point for the Tychus at level 7. Gonna be going into uh, Relentless Soldier instead. There's a lot of stuns and stuff. It makes sense. It's just... I thought they would go melting point for the just the extra damage onto things like Deathwing. Kerrigan with some combos onto Garrosh gets leapt away. Deathwing with a Cataclysm across the fort, and that fort will go down. Punisher's still around 40% HP. Whoa, wait. I've played this game for a very long time. Why didn't Deathwing get moved by the Junkrat Concussion Mine? All right, the Punisher gets mm, some of the some of the uh, keep front gate and bottom lane. The next Punisher will be either Mortar or Arcane. We'll either see it in mid or top. And as we wait for that, we'll cycle through the numbers like always. Seems like Germany will grab themselves a few camps for the mid. Uh, probably grab the camp for bottom as well, since mid's already pushed up on top of that. Or they could just hard siege into mid lane, open up the fort front gate, try and get some pre-siege before this arcane punisher in mid lane is. You can see that on your mini-map now. It's up and available. Well, it's not up and available, but it will be soon up and available for contest. A bug, probably. Yeah, you're right. You're right. Kerrigan grabs the soak for bottom. She'll probably branch off and start working on this camp soon after taking down the walls. Actually, no. Ultralis is going to continue sieging bottom lane. All right. Oh, she's probably got the uh, Sharpened Blades quest to finish out still. That's why she's probably continuing to push up a little bit far. The other thing, too, is the enemy is going to be seen. They don't have 10 talent tiers. Ultralisk was picked up by Ultralisk. Throw me with a nice big burst into pep on that Urel. And a Righteous Hammer to bop back Leoric. We've got the Slowing Sands for Chromie. We've got Tranquility for Malfurion and Tomb for Leoric. Deathwing, did he go Cataclysm upgrade? He did indeed. Burn beneath my shadow for the reset as Junkrat does go down. Another kill over the side of Germany. And this mid lane fort is going to take some extra damage. Next objective phase should be announced fairly soon. Top lane does have a wave, but that's not a concern right now for the side of Germany as they continue to just open things up looking for more map priority. What's up, Freaky? Good morning. Happy Saturday morning. Hope you're all enjoying your cartoons. Hope you're nice and cozy. Another Earth Shatter out from the Deathwing. And he'll take flight to go get some armor plates back and such. Oh, Ultralisk. Nice read on the map. We'll be able to back away before Garrosh gets any sort of displacement. It is a Decimate Garage, by the way. He's going to be uh, chopping down some trees. Deathwing will land on top of the enemies here, and that's a ton of damage onto Deathwing. There's a huge root on the ground from Malfurion as he pops the Tranquility. Death Knight chasing in. We've got a Cataclysm in from Deathwing with not a whole lot of HP. Oh my god! What was that? 16, 17 HP on the Garrosh? He steps back into the into Ultralisk, who is going to be going down. Ardent Defender from Urel getting some HP back, and uh, that's a kill over to the side of Spain right before an objective phase. Things are looking good for Spain now. I'm terribly confused trying to play Destiny 2, having a terrible time finding a good guide where to get quests, exotic weapons, and armor. Honestly, I would ask Day. Day, Day is the, like, Day knows a lot about Destiny 2. She plays a lot of Destiny 2. She knows a lot about the game as well, so if she pops in a chat at any point, I would say bug her. Uh, I believe in her Discord, she's actually got a Destiny channel as well, so if you're in her Discord, you might be able to just ask in her Discord in the Destiny channel for, like, anyone who's got any suggestions for guides or streams or whatever. That would be my recommendation. Yeah, Day plays a ton of uh, Destiny. So, yep, those are the two routes I'd go. Junkrat chasing on a dino right now. 
toss from the garage as well. They want the they want to try and pressure Dino. They just can't get a kill onto him. Was that was that just like, that just seemed like a decimate out of anger. They just just a spin a spin out of anger. I knew she played. Yeah. I mean, she doesn't make guides or anything, but she might be able to point you in the direction of a guide that she uses or that she likes or recommends. They're just written in Cran and <laughs> to be polite. Anyways. Azuabs and friends will grab the camp. No fort to go down on the opposing side. The objective phase will will go over the side of Spain. As I mentioned, they get some damage onto the fort here, but it's actually Germany who will find a structure. Junkrat gonna be pressured by Azuabs, but Nano gets the concussion mine to split away. By the way, full concussion mine build for the Junkrat, pretty much. You've got the blow him up at level one. You've got the boom pow, the bog down. You got the ripper air. If she plays in the daily, I think she almost does. Yeah, she does a lot of like seasonal quest stuff, and yeah. Garrosh looking to step in onto the Malfurion. That level one. That level one, I think, threw off the range for Garage. It looked like they max range through the Malfurion, and it was just past the Groundbreaker because the Unrivaled Strength gives you what 25% throw range. Seemed like the character was just a little extra bit out of throw range. Ultralisk's Ultralisk will go down, but Ultralisk on the Kerrigan is gonna try and ravage around here, try and get a little bit of the assimilation shields. Urel jumps in. And the side of Germany is coming into this fight like it's a kung fu movie, just one at a time. One at a time, they're 1v3ing, and this is just unfortunate. Germany will hemorrhage a few members there. Deathwing is getting value in the bottom lane, but for that many deaths, I don't think it was worth it. That's why you don't like that level one. That's that's at least my that's at least my best like guess based on what I saw. It seemed like Garrosh did the like he just moved his cursor to the max side for the for the toss combo and anyways, shrine for the top lane, but since the fort's down in bottom lane, they want to open things up. That's a lot of damage onto your relish. She has to avenging wrath away. Doesn't want to use the doesn't want to use her heroic. It's a two minute cooldown on that Argent Defender. Three minute cooldown, right? No, two minutes, two minutes. For some reason I thought it was 180 and I was like, that seems crazy. Another invade? Invade. Oh, nice. Ultralisk from Ultralisk to get the stun and the invade. Oh, did it go south? The invade. Oh, no. Spain. Oh, Spain had such a good moment, such a good lead. They were building back that momentum. She's dead, right? <laughs> Wait, Germany's almost, uh, Spain's almost done with the objective, but yeah, they, they gotta leave. They gotta leave. They gotta leave. Uh, Junkrat's fine, okay. Can they rip tire the last four? Could they rip tire the last four, chat? Mm. Gonna... Down, done. Dun 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 <laughs> Yorel goes down to the Kerrigan somewhere. Oh, Yorel tried to get the last few. Tyke's coming to your Odin. Oh no, I think they called for it, then they called back. I'm not sure. Oh, Chromie's getting so much damage. Junkrat, they're looking to poke in with some of these uh, frag launcher grenades. 32 to 37. Tychus is so very low. He's gonna go down to Leoric. Dino should fall here. I don't I don't see a world where Dino should live. Granted though, it's Dino. Okay, never mind. How unfortunate for the side of Spain. How unfortunate. I gotta be honest, I'm feeling a little bad for Spain here. 
They have so many shining moments that I'm just like, it's gonna happen! And then it just doesn't. Well, top lane fort goes down. That gives a reset onto the Deathwing Cataclysm. They'll probably pop that right here because the keep is seemingly guaranteed. Yeah. Catama cataclysm. Cataclysm across. Stun onto the Garage. A Ravage, an Impale, a Punisher jump. And this keep is going to go down. That's a reset onto Deathwing's Cataclysm. Is Germany looking to end? 20 talent here advantage. They got Katas on bottom. They got Punisher on core. Nah, they're gonna they're gonna keep this game going here. Urel does bop back those catapults, and that will not be the bottom lane keep going down. Spain's got another window to bring it on back here in map number three. Up against Germany. By the way, this is our first of three best of fives today. We'll be seeing, if this is the last map in this best of five, we'll be seeing Ukraine up against Poland next, and then later today we'll see France versus Sweden. I gotta be honest, the marquee matchup of the day for me is going to be France versus Sweden. It's gonna be the, uh, that should be some of the most competitive hots we get today. A lot of good, a lot of really talented players on both sides. Ukraine, Ukraine and, and, uh, and Poland will be good, it's just... I think, I think we're going to see more competition from France and Sweden. Hopium Overdrive. I mean, that's all you got, right? Urel is trying to take down the bottom lane fort. Try and get the extra experience for the allies. Cataclysm from Deathwing. He gets the reset as well. Gore is being looked at by Deathwing. Going to be tickled by those flames as well. He's got the Wicked Inferno and the... Conflagration. Leoric Kazuob's done with his Mithril Mace at level 16. Concussion Mind from the Junkrat pushing people around. Urel did back to help out in the defense. Core Shielding still up, but it's being withered away by the Chromian friends. Urel bopping as we get 3% off the core. The Impaler taking another percent off. Nine, 96 left to go for the side of Germany as Kromi pokes in for a few, a few good chunks onto that core right there. Slowly but surely, they're, they're, they're taking down this core. Germany with just a slow leech onto this core here. Slowly leeching the health off this core, Germany is. While Spain tries to find an angle to jump in, they gotta go in. Urel with the Righteous Hammer, Junkrat with the Rip Tire. Garros trying to decimate the enemy, spinning his best to win. Commandeer Odin does come down from Tychus with the big red button now that they've got the 20. Deathwing exiting through the top lane. Urel, does she have Ardent Defender? She gets it the last second at the bottom of her screen as Deathwing takes flight. Big red button zoning back the enemy. Decimates spinning from the Garrosh. She's looking to just try and zone back the enemy, but this is a very low Garrosh. She's able to heal off the enemy. Anduin goes down. Ultralist to be traded. Deathwing drops back down from the sky. And this fight's not over. Urel jumping in. They've got good damage still on this Deathwing. Leoric is slowing things down a little bit in his ghost form, trying to cheat death a little bit too. Dino still alive with Death Knight and Deathwing. All right. Deathwing will hearth. Because everyone knows that's how Deathwing gets HP. Junkrat on the objective. Tychus to go clear out the bottom. All right, chat. It's still going. Level 20, by the way, for, for Garrosh is big. The Deadly Calm heroes hit by Decimate deal 40% less damage for three seconds. That's pretty big. Inner fire for Anduin as well. Hello, Garrosh. Goodbye. Buried alive. Poke damage as well. That's got to be frustrating for the side of Spain. As Urel and friends, they want to finish this out. Drac is going to chunk down this Leoric. We've actually got Deathwing dropping down from the sky. 37 Skeletal Defenders as Nano on the Junkrat needs to get out of here. Concussion Mind, can he get away with this? Riptire point blank! You lose your Garrosh, you lose the Junkrat. You get the objective phase, sure. Urel goes down somewhere to the Kerrigan. 
double leap of faith onto the Tychus. Light Bomb is available if they really need to use it. Dino being slow, chastised thrown out as well. Germany wants to end here. All right, do we get the Light Bomb at the last second? Anduin has to drop it on himself. Runs right into the enemy. All right, with, uh, oh, Ultralisk wants to take down the Anduin as well. Oh, Germany, oh wow, Germany just asserting dominance here in this best of three series, as that will be the core falling. GG, well played, Germany takes the first best of five of the day in a decently timed best of five, yeah. yeah pretty good, one hour, one hour and 30 minutes roughly.